Hey, welcome to another video. In this video, we are going to refactor the product page. The images that display in here, it should cover the videos. It should cover any other type of uh, media also. And also the product information, product title, product price, quantity selector. As you can see, it's already done, but I will revert the changes. We will start again and design it and also add to cart. These are just the basic design. The functionality will be done in the next video, but for now, it is very important to understand how this design work so i will come to the main product and i will discard the changes so once i discard the changes it should trigger the refresh no design that's great okay let's come here this one is vendor let the vendor display like that but this is the product title so the product title if i scroll up a little bit let's hide it under these blocks which is under the information this is in h1 product title i want to display a bigger font size for this so we can use a text uh, 3 Excel for this one and that's great and padding from top and bottom of 3 I want to have a little like padding to top and bottom for this okay great it refresh everything is fine now product price we did the product price in the previous videos uh, the reusable product price but Shopify has its own snippet that they render it's called price now let's open the price and check what is happening in here uh, if you check the price it is almost the same as ours but except they have some more options of using variant and some more classes that they add in here and they also add this uh, visually hidden for a screen reader but i did the same thing in here so i added this text in here s or only a screen reader this one is for regular price and this one is for sale price that's the only change i did in this variant and also uh the class the, the price element now accept a uh, class also the class is because we want to modify it from different places so in the cart page it is different in the in the product pages is different in the collection pages is different so we should accept a class in here so if i come here instead of using the shop five one so we can use this underscore price element which is ours it also accept a um, product we pass the product we don't need the rest of them for now let's check out how it will look now it is looking great except the font size is a bit small so that's why we have the option to pass a class for this uh, let's use the text of lg and font of um, medium the font is font medium is going to add a font width for this so 500 should be fine and this is how it will look i think it didn't pick it yeah now it is fine in the next video i'm going to replace shopify cli with theme kit i really don't like it at this time it's not working properly at the time of this recording when i save the changes waiting a few seconds and then it reflects okay next up add to cart and then i will come to the quantity selector which is a bit like more work uh, behind the scene uh, you know this button is showing now in here so what I did, I just add a few classes in the app.scss. First is for the payment. This is the, this is called dynamic like express checkout. So if someone click buy, it automatically send them to checkout with this product. So what I can do is, uh, I have a like I have a selector in here for all the buttons. Make all of them black with the text white. Why I do this? Uh, you know this apply. It is related to um, Tailwind CSS. The good thing about apply is that you can apply the CSS uh, property in here and everything remain consistent. For example, if everywhere on my website uh, I use a border radius of SM or rounded SM, then it is going to add to 0.125 REM for me. That's like better than me remembering which one did I use. It's like 1.25 or anything else. And instead, I just say, okay, I use the small. So every, everywhere this value will be applied. The same thing for this. I can I can just directly write background of black and text white, something like that with CSS. But this is more consistent because I'm using Tailwind. This is more consistent to do it. And I have a primary button, a button primary class in here, which I can apply to any class in, in the button. And it will just take the basic theme for that button. Okay, now let's, check out uh, the add to cart if i scroll down the add to cart is okay there's a share button this is the variant picker we are going to remove a lot of this so this is buy button and buy button it has this button let's add this uh, 
button primary in this and this primary okay i think it's fine now this is add to cart this is how it will look to make it like full width you can just say full width with as full and it should take that giving you a second also we are going to justify it center so if you check it is not in the center so when we add justify center it should justify the center and if you check the button the button is displayed as flex so that is something we should uh, note in here okay that's great everything is looking fine now let's work on the product quantity currently add to cart is not working see add to cart this product form cannot sit active element that's fine you are going to rewrite this with much less code in the next videos but for now let's come back here let's design the product quantity selector if i scroll up a little bit oops there is a lot of code this is the quantity selector right okay currently none of this is working right it is not working no design nothing let's remove some of these extra thingy here okay extra classes you have label what i will do is i will make label also sr only because i don't want to display it for everyone okay that's great this is the quantity selector i am going to remove it like i don't need all of this because i'm i'm writing it with uh, alpine js it is going to be much less code so what i will do is i'll save it for now nothing will display it should remove this also right okay cool uh let's let me just control z here you see these ones are important to have these notes of displaying visually so what i can do is i can just write it below this and copy them so what i can do is let me just quickly comment this okay uh this one should be product qty wrapper oops that's it now let's give it a flex or oh, grid is much better and uh, how many items do we have we have one for minus plus and the input itself so we can say grid column three inside of this we are going to have two buttons uh, okay one button is for uh, the plus and the other button is going to be for the minus so what these buttons are going to do is let me just apply a little code in here so type is going to be button let's give it a little bit of classes also and if i put my cursor in here it should also automatically fill a number minimum of one maximum of 10 we can remove the minimum and maximum but for now let's see how they will look we save it we refresh it this is how it will look the buttons are in two sides but they are completely empty nothing is inside so that's why what i want to do is i want to render them uh, this one is going to be for the minus okay i'll put it in here and instead of visually hidden we say sr only which is what we need and the same thing i'll put down here this one should be increased oops i would rather just copy it right okay increase and this one should be a plus icon and this one should be is or only okay this is fine everything should look fine when i come here this is minus and the plus one should also appear after ref refresh these are the icons that we added okay everything is looking great in here now let's design the button a little bit now i'll select both of them and first of all and uh, there should be a wrapper right let's give this a border like it should add a border round around it and okay that is fine for now let's do one more thing and this is border now what i can do is i can give this also a border this value of input this one should have border x only from x direction i don't want to have border from top and bottom because that will double the border and also text should be center okay that's great text is center everything looks fine to me now let's add a little bit of spacing in the button uh, one thing you have to note about the design is everything should be consistent 
so for example if i am going to pick this you can see the height of this button at the top if you see the height it is 48 so if this is 48 this is also 48 this button should be also 48 so what i can do is i can say min height is 48 pixel when you are using this type of value uh alpine uh, tailwin says sorry tailwin will automatically create this class for you you can see main height is 48 pixel now if i come here it should apply that but since it is it didn't compile it yet that's why i want to switch to normal uh, theme kit it didn't save that yet okay we'll just keep doing it okay the width should be a hundred percent oops let me just select both of them the width should be hundred percent okay that's great now yeah it is displaying them properly and let's make it flex item center justify center also cursor should be pointer okay everything looks good right and it should make it in the center and everything should look fine for now this is just the basic design obviously you will change it in the future but yeah the cursor is working fine now if someone click on this it should increase this i know this is a number that you can do from here but this is the best way you can do so let's add a click event on this if someone at clicked I want to add an event for each of them so to add an event we use alpine.js right so uh, for for that we have to wrap it around a component so we say x data now when we run this x data inside of this we have a quantity by default it is one quantity will be like uh, let's say a property and this is the value of the input and we can bind it with the input that we have here using x model if we say x model qty or quantity then it is going to do that let's also give it a name of quantity this is an optional but it is important to have a name like you have to add it why we don't use it but just let it be there in the future i will explain why we do that also if i pick this now it is 48 this is also 48 and everything is matching okay that's great now when someone click on this i want to call a function called minus let's say one it's going to do a minus one why i am putting a value while well, you can just say minus without any value the reason i put a value is because in the future i might add minus two although i don't do that but yeah just give it um give it uh, i go like this this one will be plus now where are these functions we will define the functions in here so in alpine i'll bring it down into its own line in the future we can extract it into a separate javascript file but for now let's keep it in here because it is not a lot of code so this is going to be minus and it is going to accept a value let me see if, if uh, copilot can complete it for me wow that's great right that's great okay copilot did complete this for me i would like to write it but yeah this is going to minus it but it is going to also check if the quantity is less than one make it one that's cool right yeah that's cool okay next up we have plus for the plus this is what we do how easy it is like copilot is auto completing this value it is a bit dangerous but at the same time fun to write code in this although i could refactor this and make it less than this so they just okay okay let's see if it's working yeah minus and plus everything is working in here and just to make sure like we are smarter than copilot i'm going to rewrite this instead of writing these conditions in here like why not just remove the if condition and write something like this if it is equal to one this is what i write okay i'll also remove this much less good. i'm going to say if the quantity is equal to one so here is what you do you are going to uh, make it equal to one otherwise plus plus or instead of plus plus i'm going to say plus equal to value 
this is just in one line so if it is equal to one make it one otherwise make it more than that so that way it is not going to go less than that value to make sure it is working it is like just one line of code uh, plus working minus is working it is working great and yeah this is how it should function uh, okay that's all we need in this in this part of this section uh, also in the last video you notice the um, video is not showing in here uh, I went to check the Shopify um, support in here this is how you will this is a condition that you write for all of them for if it is image if it is external video if it is video this is what you do let me add it quickly so we can also like modify it and that's like the refactoring part I will create a file uh, a snippet called media dot liquid and in here we paste it something like this so we just pass the media in here and this is the size I will remove this padding top this is because of the lazy loading a lot of people add I haven't tried it yet but we are going to use this in the main product if I scroll up okay also I don't need this anymore um, yep I don't need this anymore everything should be cleaned up okay cool now if I come at the top let me just close this part opening product media in here we are like adding the media instead of adding that as a source in here let's just include the media and we are going to pass media in here let's change this to render so you might ask why i write a ren why do i don't write render because the chrome extension cannot uh, to complete the render so i save it for now let's come back in here and everything should look fine except for the fact that we don't check if this is the first media or not should so we add another class to that now yeah it is showing everything and also the video that we have here i know the video is too small but we have to modify it you have to come here and if it is equal to video this is what we add to the video uh, we have to pick it and then make it larger i don't know i don't know if it accept a class or not in here let's put a class of width of 100 if this apply if it doesn't that's still fine controls is true class is equal to full width I save it again refreshing it still does not doing the job properly yeah it did work now this is full width of the video it is working except for the first image which is not big not a big deal I can do it behind the scene but you get the idea now if you upload the, any type of media Shopify should accept it and everything should look uh, the same way as we expected they also add this normally like product like media ID for JavaScript if in the future you want to change it if someone changed the variant let's say you have product with different color if someone changed the color you want to change the product also that's why they added in here but we focus on the future for now I think it is looking great and this is all we need okay it came to the checkout let's go back I hope this video has been informative thank you for watching and in the next video let's switch back to ThemeKit and you will see how easy it is to develop I don't want to wait like a single a single second not a second like a few seconds is it work like is it working is it not where is something wrong I don't want to do that that's why we will switch to ThemeKit but in the future like if someone is watching this video in the future they can always use Shopify CLI when they fix all the issues that you see so yeah thank you for watching and i will see you in the next video